Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Um, I've got another scooter video today. Try to make these videos a little bit shorter and just dealing with whatever I'm working on for the day and then upload it at the end of the day. Um, just let me know what you think about these videos down in the comments below. And, um, you know, we'll go from there. I know this is a woodworking channel, but I've always said that it's more than woodworking. It's just things that I'm interested in. And right now, I'm interested in these little Honda scooters. So, this is the scooter that's going up on the lift today. I made a quick little modification to my lift. I added a piece of melamine to it, uh, just to give it a little bit more surface area. And when I do use the lift, for woodworking purposes, glue does not stick to the melamine, so and it's easier to clean, and it's kind of a win-win situation. So I'm going to go ahead and get this scooter up on the lift, and then I'll let you in on what I'm planning on doing today. I don't remember if I told you guys where I got this scooter. Um, just recently I picked it up off of Facebook Marketplace. Um, it was very cheap for what one of these go for. And the thing is pristine. Um, well, for something that is, uh, what, 25 years old, 35 years old, 35 years old. Uh, so, you know, you got your normal, just small rust spots, but overall the paint is great. It's complete. Um, and it's even, it even has the chain guard, which is one of the, the first things to go on these models. Just anytime somebody needed to do maintenance on the chain, they'd pull the chain guard off and wonder why it was even on there in the first place and get rid of it. Another big thing that's great with this guy is the fact that the, uh, not only is the muffler intact, but uh, there's really no rust or anything, so you can tell this thing was stored indoors um, for most of its life. Um, what I plan on doing today is just a little bit of a valve job. That's all I've got left. I've already cleaned the carburetor, tuned it up. When I bought it, I couldn't get it over 25 miles an hour. Then I pulled this carb off. And uh, which, and this carb is a different, it, it came off a different motorcycle. I don't know what this carb belongs to, but it's not original to this motorcycle, but it works. I pulled the carb off, I cleaned it, I got the speed up to 35, and it's doing some funny stuff, uh, full throttle. So I'm going to go ahead and check the valve clearance, tighten that up a little bit, and then hopefully I can get this thing up to 40. I'd be comfortable going 40 on this guy. And then I'll put the uh, front leg shield back on and you'll be able to see this thing in all its glory. As you can see I've already got the uh, tappet cover off of the intake valve here. Um, what I need to do is find the top dead center and this scooter has little handy windows that you can look through to find the timing marks without having to take the cover the cover off. I'm going to do that right now. This might take me just a minute. Got to figure out where top dead center is. I'm using a 2000th shim. The hole's kind of tight and the carburetor's in the way, so I had to, I bent it at a 90 degree angle to help get it inside the hole. Something's tight, but I might not be at top dead. I might be on the, I might be uh, 180 degrees off, so let me double check. Yeah, I am.
you need to tighten it just a smidge. So I can feel it dragging on the shim, so that means that it should be good. I'm just watching that stem to make sure it doesn't turn with the nut. Okay, that's the top. We've got one more to do. Doing this all one-handed while I'm holding the flywheel in position. So that one hasn't been open in a long time. That one feels a little loose too, so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera because I know you can't even see what I'm doing now. Okay, I adjusted everything. I know you've probably um, heard this before if you're into motors, but these shims, the way that they work is you tighten the valve until you feel it drag on the shim as you're pulling it out from under the valve. And it's really not something that you can learn uh, by watching or um, you know by having somebody tell you. It's really something you have to learn by feel. But it's pretty uh, unmistakable when it happens, and so. I'm pretty sure I got these valves dialed into two thousandths of an inch. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to run it for a second, go out and you know drive around and see how fast I can get it. And if all is good, I'm going to pop the leg shield back on and I will see you guys at that point. Well, there she is with the 
leg shield back on all buttoned up I'm pretty pleased with the result of that valve job um, before I worked on the valves I could only get it up to about 35 miles an hour and I just took her out as you could see in the video that I provided that on that trip I got it up to just under 43 miles an hour on on a flat straight road so I think these were advertised as max top speed of 45 miles an hour uh, when they were sold maybe they were sold at 50 miles an hour I'm not sure but I'm pretty satisfied with 40 so um, I lost I finally got rid of that odd behavior when I went to full throttle and so I assumed it had to do with compression and missing like misfiring and things like that so that'll wrap this one up um, I have a lot of work to do on the red one still there's some parts missing and I gotta install the chain and I'm getting parts chromed and things like that so this series will continue let me know what you guys think thanks for stopping by I'll talk to you guys next time